Ten days ago, the White House announced the formation of a Climate Corps, a 20,000-person group of young Americans that will train to work in clean energy, conservation, and climate resilience skills. It's a public sector response to a growing youth movement in climate activism. A Pew Research poll from November found that 53% of Americans say human activity is responsible for a warming planet. However, only 32% of evangelical Christians agree. But as Adam Yamaguchi found out, a new generation is trying to make believers of skeptics in the church. Your polluted system's got to go, hey, hey! Ahead of this month's UN General Assembly in New York, youth activists flooded the streets, we need, we have calling to end the use of fossil fuels. Among them, the group Faith Hub and member Elsa Barron. People are praying for the extreme heat to end. Or the climate more, research uh, fellow more than hopes that this summer's weather could help change the minds of climate skeptics. My faith tradition calls me to stewardship or responsible care for this beautiful world we inhabit. Elsa's made it her mission to help spread the gospel within her own community of evangelical Christians, who are, as a group, the most skeptical Americans when it comes to climate change. What sort of tension do you feel within that community? There's a lot of emphasis on sort of God's um, divine care for the world and, and his good plan for the world. And so some people kind of take that and say, you know, if you think the, the world is at risk, then maybe you don't have enough trust or faith in God. Can go from there. So Elsa's speaking to her community the best way she knows how, by quoting from the Bible. Probably the most commonly, you know, referred to and cited and maybe even debated single verse related to climate and environment is, is right there in Genesis. Genesis 2.15 says, Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to cultivate it and keep it. What does loving our neighbors really look like in a world where the sorts of decisions we're making are directly impacting people's ability to live in their homes across the world or to manage their crops or have food or water to drink. I was just reading something yesterday, I think. Elsa's not alone in feeling the need to spread the word. In November 2022, Galen Curry and the National Association of Evangelicals issued a sweeping report urging members to help curb or mitigate climate change on a biblical basis. Why is there so much skepticism within the evangelical community about the signs of climate change? Well, very sadly, this whole issue has become politicized in an unhelpful way. And they say, oh, well, if I'm conservative then, or if I'm Republican or whatever, then I must, must be opposed to this stuff. A city where the water is pure to drink, the air clean to breathe. In the 1970s, evangelical Christians were early leaders in raising concerns about environmental degradation. But in the 90s, political conservatives began to emphasize economic growth over environmental concerns by casting doubt on climate science. In 2021, Franklin Graham took his climate denial message to Facebook, posting, climate change is nothing new. He compared it to extreme events in the Bible, like the famine in Egypt and flooding in Genesis. I think that's unfortunately where the issue is wound up for a lot of people. Uh, but we still have the Bible. Uh, it hasn't changed, and so we continue to call people back to that. Is that to say that to be a good Christian, one should steward the planet? Well, certainly that is one of the fundamental responsibilities that God gave us. We can solve this crisis in multiple ways. Elsa Baron understands where climate denial takes shape. Her own journey to a climate reckoning took a long, circuitous road. She grew up in the church in Wheaton, Illinois, where evangelical Christianity is firmly rooted. She says she was known as the creation girl for her strongly held beliefs. How did you square science education with, with some of what you had grown up to understand about the world? I was very passionate about science, and um, I also had this hesitation because I think the community I grew up in had a very literal interpretation of the Bible, and so I really pushed back, I think, in the classroom against uh, the science of evolution, for example, and, and was um, very skeptical of it. But as Elsa dug into her fascination with science, she struggled to reconcile her beliefs. I was starting to really see the evidence behind 
things like evolution or even climate change was sort of a less talked about. And it was definitely a moment of questioning for me in crisis of whether I could still hold on to my faith at all. She contemplated leaving the church entirely as her two worlds were seemingly on a collision course. That was very much a turning point for me to um, trying to dig in my heels and, and really have these tough conversations that I hope will inspire the kind of change we need. To create the change from the inside. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> but change can come slowly. Moving from concern, from care into action is, is really the way forward. Elsa's found some of the most difficult conversations happen even closer to home. That doesn't mean we shouldn't act. Her father, Todd, recognizes a responsibility to care for God's creation, but has doubts about the cause of extreme weather. I just think there is some resiliency in our, in our planet, and the fact that meteorology records go back no more than 200 years, maybe even 150 years. So I think we've got a small slice of looking at these things and thinking about them in such a way where we don't know, you know what's going to happen. Does that make for awkward Thanksgiving dinner? <laughs> Yeah, sometimes. I mean, especially now that I work um, full time doing climate related research, there's always a little bit of silence, you know, maybe some comments that are made um, that, You've that been I brainwashed. Hear. Yeah. Or maybe I'm working for, you know, the wrong side, quote unquote. But I think that it's, it's worth it. I mean, and I, I try to keep opening spaces for conversation to happen and, and not just sort of be swept under the rug. Elsa's sister and her mom have been much more receptive to her message. We go through droughts and whatnot. Um, it's opened my eyes to potential destruction and opportunity to do something. Elsa is anxious about the rapidly ticking clock, but she remains hopeful. Yeah, it was a really good conversation. She moved to Washington, D.C., where she pushes to affect policy and legislation on the climate crisis. Five summers out, if we don't really, you know, hit the ground running with taking action, this might look like a mild summer in comparison. For CBS Saturday Morning, Adam Yamaguchi in Washington, D.C. I really commend her for stepping out there and, and trying to bridge a divide between, like, not just her family, but her, her faith. Yeah. And then the community that she really believes in. And that is such a good way to potentially make change, because if anybody is going to open minds, it would be somebody who has the same faith and can say, here's how I see it, here's what I believe, even though these two things may not match up in so your many, mind. So many people think it's either faith or science. Right. And it can be, be right? both. both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really nice piece.